Hyprocess Book is a popular way to present time series data, and it specializes in using that data in a really visual and real-time way. In this video, I'll be showing you all the ways that we can use a Pyprocess Book display to really get the most out of our data. Now this display was already built for me, so the first thing I'll do is make sure that I'm in run mode, as indicated by this cursor icon. In run mode, I can still select things and pull up tooltips, but I won't be able to make any changes to the display. Changes will be made in build mode, and we won't get into that in this video. So in run mode, the first thing that we can see is that some symbols are here to represent data, and other symbols are here just to give that data context. For instance, things like my boiler overview title, my piping over here, I even have a picture of a coal mill and some data labels. These are called static symbols because they don't change when my data changes. Things that change when my data changes, like this trend or my bar graph, or these black values here, these are called dynamic symbols because they change dynamically when my, when my data changes. In run mode, I can interact with my dynamic symbols using my cursor. So if I'm a process engineer really interested in my drum pressure, I can mouse over it and see which pi point it's using. And over the last eight hour time interval, I can see its minimum, maximum, and its average. Now, if this time interval seems arbitrary to you, it's really not. It's decided by the time range up here. My time range will have a start time and an end time. And all of my symbols on my display that only show one value will be using the value at the end time of the time range. Things like my trend and my tooltip will be using the entire time range. So for instance, if I move the start time of my time range back in time, we can see my trend compress as it tries to fit more and more time onto the trend. Now if I move the time range back in time, both my start and end time are both going to change. So we can see here that my values and my bar graph and my trend are all sliding back in time. And if I mouse over to pull up a tooltip again, we can see that I've changed my time range to be 15.17 hours over a different time period. And then my average, minimum, and maximum are also reflecting that new time range. If I want to see a really specific drum pressure time range, I can use this icon here and explicitly set my time range. So for instance, if I'm curious about the time range of yesterday, I can type in a start time of Y, which is the pi abbreviation for yesterday at midnight, and T for today at midnight, I'll hit OK, and then mousing over the drum pressure again, I can see the time interval of 24 hours and what the average, the new minimum, and the new maximum was of all of yesterday. Once I'm done analyzing that, hitting revert here will get me back to my default, which is currently set to the last eight hours to current time. Now, if that analysis wasn't quite thorough enough, I can select my data, click View, and open the Details window. In the Details window, I can see point by point all the data that's actually in the Pi Data Archive. I can also see if that data is questionable, has been annotated, or substituted at all. I can also export or copy this data to Clipboard. So for instance, if this data is suspect to me, I can click here to select it, and then down here, make an annotation for it. So if I have decided that this data is unusually low, I can write a comment here, save it, and this will appear for my colleagues when they inspect that point. I can also see a little bit more about that point, like the statistics over the time interval. This will show the tooltip statistics, but also things like the range, the count, and my standard deviation that aren't on the tooltip. Furthermore, I can also see the point attributes of what I have selected. So here's things like, is that point archiving? How much compression is that point under? When was that point created? 
And of course my details window will change based on what I have selected. So if I have my bar graph selected, I can see that the data item is sinusoid and it's archiving. I can also use my point attributes to really understand why my display is displaying what it's displaying. So for instance, if I'm curious why my drum level goes from 0 to 100, I can see that it's, it's 0 at the bottom and it's 100 here. That seems pretty arbitrary to me. But in my point attributes, down at the bottom, there's a value called 0 and span. So my drum level is actually using a 0 of 0, and then it's going to add the span to that to show the top of the drum level. And then it's going to fill this bar graph with blue based on the value of my data item between that 0 and 100. So it looks like it's about 65 right now. And because it's a dynamic symbol, I can mouse over it, pull up the tooltip, and see the exact value. Another way to interact with my dynamic symbols is trends. I can see here that my trend has some values on the left, and then it's going to fill a line based on what that value is. But I can also double click on it to zoom in and really get into the nitty gritty pieces. So here I can zoom in and out, scale back or forward in time, and if I get lost I can click on this revert icon again. And I can also see my annotations that I've made. So if I'm curious about this valley here, I can click and drag a box around it. And this is going to zoom into that exact box and fill the screen with it. Now if this still isn't specific enough for me, moving my cursor over to the left, I can wait till it turns into a trend cursor icon, click and drag one out. So let's say I'm curious about this valley right here. I can drop my trend cursor in it and see the exact value at the exact time of that trend cursor. I can also pull multiple trend cursors out if I want to compare that valley to maybe this valley. I can see that this exact value and this exact value and this exact time and this exact time if I need to make a comparison. Of course I can always revert back to the default to clear my trend cursors. Finally, if I double click again, I can get back to my display. Now trends are a really good way to look at your time series data, but they don't always make sense to show on screen at all times. If you want to make a temporary trend, you can do that. So if I'm trying to compare my drum pressure to my drum saturation, I can select both of these values, move my cursor up, and click on this temporary ad hoc trend button. So now I can compare my saturation to my pressure. I can do all the things that I could do on the other trend, like zoom out, zoom back, revert, and my annotations will show up. But when there's multiple pi points on your trend, you can choose to show or hide them by clicking on them in the legend. So let's say that I've decided that this teal line is completely normal and I don't need to look at it anymore. I can click on it in the legend and then run my analysis as I normally would on this green one that I'm more interested in. Now, this is an ad hoc trend, meaning that it's open in a new window. So double clicking on the background won't take me back to the display. To go back to the display, I actually have to close the ad hoc trend window by clicking on this X here, being careful not to actually close Pi Process Book. Another way that data is being presented to me right now is actually the color of this bar graph here. Now as a process engineer, I really need to pay attention to when the drum level gets too high. So I ask the designer of the process book display to really get my attention when the drum level gets too high. So I'll show you that when I go back in time to a point where drum level exceeded 80, they colored it bright red so it really catches my attention. This is called a multi-state symbol because how it's being displayed is qualitatively changed based on the value of Another thing that was put in to make my life easier is buttons. Buttons can do a lot of different things, but the designer of this display is using it to close the window and return. So 
As an example, clicking on this button will close the boiler overview and take me to my area graphic overview, where I can look back at my boiler, maybe go into the turbine, the generator, or the switchyard process book displays. I'll go back into my boiler. Once I'm done analyzing all of the symbols, I need to make sure that I can trust the data on my display. So I can check the health of the data on my display by looking at the status report in the bottom right. Clicking on this circle will pull up the status report. My status report is going to show a line for each data stream on my display. And it'll show a little symbol here, and it'll be green if it's healthy, but if it's not healthy, I'll see a little red X, as well as the message maybe indicating what might be wrong with that data stream. And if I even have one red X on my status report, in the bottom right, I'll also see a red X. But because it's a green circle right now, I know that all my data is healthy. So now that I'm done looking at all my dynamic symbols, and I've decided that all my data is healthy, I'm ready to present my display. What I'll do is click on this full screen icon right here. And this will really commit all my screen real estate to my display. So I'll close my details window, hold the control key, and move my mouse wheel in a little bit. So now that my display is taking up the entire monitor, it's ideal to be displayed maybe in a building lobby, or if I have a monitor dedicated to it in my control room. Of course, if I need to make changes to it or see my toolbars again, I can click my full screen mode again, and then holding the control key, backing up the mouse wheel, I'll zoom back out. So far in this video, we saw all the different ways that we can interpret static and dynamic symbols in a process book display, as well as how to dig deeper into tooltips, details, and time ranges. In the next videos, I'll show you how to build out your own displays, and we'll learn some effective ways to organize and link our displays together.